Back issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. We've been meaning to do this book for a long time. This is Batman the Cult, written by Jim Starlin with art by Bernie Wrightson, who just recently passed away. He's a great, mm. prolific horror artist and also drew, for those fans of the show, Batman Aliens. Oh, oh nice. Yay. Which looked awesome and was, I think, pretty awesome, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a story from 1988. It is a. Uh, classic Batman tale that a lot of people reference in their top ten favorite and best Batman stories of all time. I've never heard of this book. No. Nor have I. It's, you've it's, never talked about it. No, you say we've been meaning to do it, you really mean I've been meaning yeah. to do it, and you two have been now brought along meaning for the ride. to sit on the couch and see what comes up like we do every week. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, and this is no different than any other episode. Ah. Uh, the difference, however, is that this book is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think we'll be the judge of that. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Uh, how, how is there an awesome Batman book that we've I've never, never heard of? Right? Because this is really dark, and not a lot of people talk about it, and it's kind of like been lost to the wayside. You'll see a lot of references in this book to other books that you do know. Okay. Um, like I said, 88. I think it came out in August. Uh, Jason Todd is Robin at this point. Okay. Oh. Uh, in a few short months, he will be dead. Written by the same guy who wrote this. Oh. Uh, and two years prior, Dark Knight Returns came out. Mm -hmm. And an interesting fact about this book is that, uh, first of all, this book was recently printed, the one I have here. Mm -hmm. You can tell because of the recent DC yeah. logo, uh, which means this thing is constantly in... Uh, Pre-production. Yeah, yeah they're, they're constantly reprinting it and putting it out because people keep wanting it. Uh, okay. When it first came out, it was one of the first uh, DC prestige format books. Where, uh, for example, if you wanted to pick up Dark Knight Returns in 1986, you would get it in the floppies. Right. right. Just a regular old shitty newsprint, not, random 80s comic. Same deal with Year One. Uh, just a simple, like, your, your acid-soaked fingers would have destroyed it instantly. I'm surprised there are any copies left in the universe. <laughs> uh, but Oh, you don't put your gloves on every time you read a comic? That's, that's what I do. Well, here's the thing. I did the before value. the CCG came in, yeah. and then I could put my comic into an invisible coffin and put a grade on it. And never read it again. Yeah, and then never look at it again. I, I didn't even look at the first time. Which is, which oh, is crack that spine. That, that's where comics belong, really. It's <laughs> behind plexiglass, mounted on your wall. That's why you buy two copies: one to put in the coffin and yeah. one to read. Right, and if everybody buys two coffee copies, then there's no reason for you to have put it in the coffin in the first place because everybody has a copy, and therefore it's not scarce or rare or valuable anymore. So why just do that? Well, it's so I can read it in like a hundred years, or someone else can read it. Or the lucky recipient. Can, yeah. Whoever purchases when it from my the, estate. When all the non-coffinized versions have decayed and, and ground to dust. Yes. Mine will still exist. I'll be dead. Naturally. Probably. But someone might. Oh, unless, unless they I'm, extend life. Unless they figure it out. <laughs> and I'm only was holding out hope for that. Uh, that's why I have my comic collection is to fulfill my, my ability to prolong my life. That's right. Yeah. I sustain myself on it. It's actually a character who does something very similar to that in this book. And we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh. Try to remember that I said that so okay. we can bring it all back around. <laughs> In fact, hang on. I'm going to get my other copies. Okay. All four of them are, are signed by Jim Starlin, Bernie Wrightson, and The Colorist. Um, which is awesome. Uh, but these, this is how they originally came out. Holy shit, Batman's holding a gun. Yeah. It's, this is a cool story. Um, I also love it. Tiffany pointed this out when I first uh, picked these up. Um... Batman isn't on the cover. Like, you don't see Batman oh. for the first three issues until the last issue, which yeah. is actually deliberate. It's like pieces of it. But this is the format it came out in. Just this hardbound, rigid, good, glossy paper format. Yeah. Uh, which is actually ironic that the copy that everybody can get is on this, like, really cheap, shitty newsprint. But anyway, uh, that's how it came out, and it was kind of a big celebration. They put that's, out a lot of, That's like, a thick book. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's longer than you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, and it was a mini-series that took place within continuity and affected the story hmm. of Batman overall. It wasn't an imaginary tale, nor right. was it an origin story or a prequel or anything. This is the, Batman was interrupted and the cult happened. Um, as a kid, I grew up looking at at least the first, if not the fourth, issues on the wall behind my comic book retailer. Uh, it was alongside things like Killing Joke and uh, Batman Venom. With, like, very high price tags? Yes. And I would also be like, what is that? Like, I have a thousand Batman comics. Why can't I have that one? 
And he's like, because you can't read that one. That one's not for you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And back then I wasn't like, why not? I defy you. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I was about 12, 13 that I decided <laughs> to start doing that. <laughs> this came out. It, it, it blew the doors off. Everybody loved it. And it paved the way for DC to start like really pushing the envelope when it came to publishing and printing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. Does this have the Comics Code Authority? No. No. Straight up no. The book opens, and we're looking at Wayne Manor, and it looks like a gothic, abandoned, yeah. you know, Bates Motel esque vision. Yeah. And there's really a young cool. Bruce Wayne. He's wandering through the grounds of Wayne Manor, and his ongoing internal monologue is about what he's seeing and what he's interpreting. And you can tell it's a young, it's an old Bruce Wayne in a young Bruce Wayne's body. You know, he's like. He's remembering it. Yeah. yeah, or he's having a horrible dream. He's having a dream. Mm-hmm. We see him enter Wayne Manor, and it's just this decayed, rotting uh, mausoleum of, like, stuff okay. from his family. That also makes a lot more sense that it's a dream, which is why, like, Wayne Manor doesn't look exactly like well, it's a like, tiny house on a hill. Well, Wayne Manor is not a tiny house on a hill. It's often quite large and looming and gothic. Yeah. Uh, so... He opens the door to the cellar, which of course is where the Batcave is, and he goes down this labyrinth. And it's not normally like this. Right. Where it looks like a like the cask like... of Amontillado's root cellar. <laughs> or the stairs from uh, Lord of the Lord Rings. Lord of the Rings, Rings exactly. Yeah. When they're escaping the Belrog. Yeah. yeah, but he knows that he has to open this uh, this this door that re- leads further into the cellar. Um, and he, tell, he tells himself, I'm young and invincible, I can open this. When he gets to the door, he realizes he shouldn't, but he, he can't control himself anymore. Opens it up and the Joker pops out, like a jack-in-the-box. Oh. And he torments uh, young Bruce and then threatens to blow himself up with dynamite, uh, oh. which he himself? tries to oh. do. Yeah, oh, well, and then together, of course. Oh, yes. uh, which he does, and then he says, like, oh, April Fool's, it's not really a bomb. It's just uh, but something. maybe it's not April, I don't really know, and it's obviously, like, it's the madness is continuing to yeah. permeate throughout the story. And then... Uh, Joker laughs at young Bruce. Well, Smells into flowers. Yes. That's cool. And then young Bruce uh, says, you know, you're insane and you've murdered countless people and I don't know why I've let you do this for so long. And as he's yelling at the Joker, he morphs into an older Bruce Wayne and then the older Bruce Wayne morphs into Batman Ooh. and then conjures an axe and then he decapitates the Joker and then hacks him to death. Oh my God. Wow. And as he's hacking away, he's thinking to himself, like, I can't believe I waited this long. It makes me feel so good to do this. And then he wakes up, and he's covered in blood, and he's suspended about, like, two or three feet off the ground. Oh, thank God he's covered in blood and not, like, other... Like he was having a, a happy dream. <laughs> yes. Can't believe I waited so long to do this! <laughs> yeah, he was so a, great! I had all this pent-up aggression. <laughs> yeah. Thank God he's covered in blood. I was like... <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, like, he ejaculated all over himself. Yeah. Like, he had a wet dream from yeah. killing the Joker. Yeah, no, it was just so good. Welcome to Back Issues. <laughs> so Sorry. The Batman is actually a prisoner in a subterranean lair, and he's bleeding out from like, a gunshot wound. Oh. And then he remembers, like, oh, crap. Like, I'm not in my old house. I'm hanging here as I have been for the last week. Ah. And I haven't eaten, and I haven't drank anything. Like, I'm delirious, and I'm, like... Plus, some rats would come. Yeah. Catch him with my feet, Jeez. right? It's very Court of Owls. Yeah, yeah. Long before that. <laughs> Long before Court of Owls, like a 30 years before. Uh, so is this so, going to be a, like, I bet you're wondering how I got into this mess. It, it kind of, okay. but not nearly as contrived. Well, yeah. Because uh, he's he's just narrating his own goings-on, and we see as he goes progressively further into darkness where that leads. But He goes further into darkness Oh, it gets thinking about decapitating the Joker with an axe? That's like this. We're setting the precedent here. <laughs> Batman hacks the Joker to death in all the bloody goodness you would come to expect from an unrated comic book. Yeah. And then it turns out he's actually covered in like blood and fecal matter and he's in the sewers being suspended from like ropes surrounded by homeless people whose names he doesn't know but one looks like a rat so he calls that one in his own mind rat face. Wait, they're alive? Yeah. And they haven't let him down? No, they are the ones who brought him there. Oh. And you, how did that happen? Well, let's right. go back. <laughs> Ratface tells Batman or regales him of the story, the origin of Deacon Blackfire and uh, this, like, Native American uh, tribesman who, there was, like, an incursion between, like, the witch doctor and the, and, and the, and the chieftain. Right. And uh, Blackfire was the uh, witch doctor, basically, and he beats the chief to death with a club. And he was too slow to kill everyone in the camp. 
So they shoot him with arrows oh. and then unceremoniously strap him to like a, a like a trunk. I mean, and, if he was fast enough to kill everyone in the camp, that would be a be little crazy. crazy. Well, yes, but we are talking... We're clearly, these homeless people worship Blackfire like unto a messiah or god, so he should have supernatural abilities. I see. Um, of course, we're also referring to this dude like he's here right now, and we're telling his origin story as though it happened in, like, the 1600s. So, you know, he probably already possesses some kind of supernatural abilities. If he's around that long. If he's around that long. Yeah. So he tells the story, and it's very Christ allegory, where he, like, they take his body, they throw it in a, in a cave, they roll a boulder in front of it. Okay. Uh, then um, they erect, like a, like, a tribal warning in front of the cave. Like, don't just, disturb it? Yeah, don't disturb this. And it's a carving of Blackfire's face in the wood. And it's just kind of, like, there as a warning. Mm. Um Batman kind of laughs in Ratface's rat face and tells him, you know, like, do you really expect me to believe that your shaman deacon leader is hundreds of years old? And that yeah. and Ratface, of course, uh, slaps him around and tells him, like, you know, you're a non-believer. Like, shut up and listen to my story. <laughs> uh, Blackfire then appears before him. Oh. Uh, not like by magic. He just walks over. Yeah. But, uh, I but like he, that he's wearing a priest outfit yeah. yes he stands before batman and he's like you know of course we understand that you don't believe but like you will one day and batman's like like no and mm -hmm. in his own head he's thinking like god like he's so impressive and charismatic and imposing and like i could almost believe that he is hundreds of years old but like that would be insane and i'm not gonna do that and yeah, I think... that's insane but, but it's he's... not like an alien coming from outer space who's like super strong who's my has... friend who's my friend who i talk to every day and has laser eyes mm -hmm. like hey that's that's a mathematical like yeah, probability that's, a, that's science that's, fiction that's, that's from not... a different area in space so maybe this guy's an alien too he's not an alien okay I, i'm well, just saying but like, yeah but you know that crazy thing. stuff is real superman does not come up in this book <laughs> when he absolutely should and you have to kind of divorce Batman from the, the Justice League, like the larger, yeah. yeah, in order for this story to function. Because really because Batman I mean, that's makes fair for a lot of stuff. Yeah, but Batman yeah, makes some choices that you're like, uh, Superman should have shown up at some point right now, <laughs> and he doesn't, and it allows the story to be dark. Yeah, and it encapsulates everything that I like about Batman stories, where it's like it's Batman and the Bat Family, also known as Alfred <laughs> and maybe Robin. Yeah, the end. He doesn't, like, whisper Clark when he's about to be killed by Bane, which he should have done in Nightfall, but doesn't. Uh, but he doesn't do any of that. He doesn't have a Green Lantern ring in storage that he uses when things get really hairy, like he does. And it's a yellow lantern ring, by the way, but I digress. So we're seeing the delirium and the hunger and the thirst permeate Batman's, like, psyche. Mm -hmm. right. And so he's, like, entertaining the notion that Blackfire might actually be divine, but he also still has a little bit of a sanity left, so he's like, no. But once I get down and I gather some evidence, I'll be able to prove he isn't. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. We're, he doesn't really detect much <laughs> in this story. Uh, so this story is also punctuated by uh, a, a literary device that worked really well in a story called Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> because it looks exactly like that. Yeah. Where uh, there's talking heads on the news and they're talking about this homeless problem. Councilman Holmes is talking about how the homeless problem is being solved. And his even as we speak, it's being solved. Right, right well, now. like here's Batman the deal. said, he'd take care of it. No, well, like the I have gunmen the, roving the streets, murdering them all. Well, the interviewer is like, I see homeless people all the time, and he's like, yes, but you don't see them sleeping anywhere. Like, I basically am saying that the homeless are being cared for. Sure, you're seeing them walking the streets, oh. but like they have some place to go. And then the reporter's like, yeah, but we have the numbers from all the shelters. There aren't enough shelters to protect the amount of homeless people that Gotham has. Something is happening. Hmm. And Holmes like, yo, I don't care as long as it's working. And they're like, okay. Okay, but what's happening though? Right. Well, I'm not going to tell you that because I'm turning them into Soylent Green. No. Yeah, Councilman Holmes is not involved in some nefarious scheme. Right. Where, and it's not science fiction. He's just science fiction. ignorant Precisely. of what's actually happening. Totally unbelievable for a councilman to be right. such. Everything's cool. Don't worry about it. In fact, I bet that when the evidence comes out about this homeless problem, it won't be nearly as much of a problem as everybody said it was. And the interviewer's like, I find that hard to believe. We and have then, the evidence now. And we see Batman like watching the TV because it's a flashback, and he's like, I also find that hard to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, something's happening. Yes. So uh, as so we're treated to a couple of flashbacks, like Batman leading up to his capture and Blackfire's origin, where... Uh, 
the tribe that supposedly killed and imprisoned Blackfire in a cave, yeah. they leave. They, they're like, this whole place, like the, the crops wouldn't perform, the game mm. all left the forest, and they're like, screw it, we have to go. So well, they that's bail. the thing about being nomads. Right. Uh, so they leave, and they are immediately slaughtered by a rival tribe. Mm. Oh, and that's, everyone is dead. That's the worst thing about being nomads. Uh, yes. <laughs> so when we next check in with Blackfire, uh, there's a group of European explorers that come to the land, and because everything is... Because there's no Native American tribes anywhere near where they're landing and where they will eventually settle Gotham City, uh, they build two settlements. They build one on the water and then one further back, further into the into the woods, so they can get more resources and, and, and there's no obstacles to stop them, so it's working out great. And, of course, they go to the cave and they disturb it. And, uh-huh. um, they don't understand the totem that's in front of it right so they just ignore it and when they open the cave blackfire's fine <laughs> just chilling in there yeah so i've been <laughs> i've been lifting this entire time yeah <laughs> i mean ready. look at him he is totally shredded <laughs> so there's a crime that was committed that batman decides to investigate after it takes place of course um where there's a group of people who are stealing some shit from a warehouse and they kill the security guards and then a group of roving homeless people slaughter them indiscriminately. Oh. Uh, And then Batman and Gordon show up to the bloody aftermath to investigate it, and Batman does some of his detection, and he's like, you know, well, the people who killed everyone here were potentially homeless. And Gordon's like, how do you know there were multiple people? And he's like, well, because of these footprints, and because I know they're homeless because of the heel prints they leave are incredibly worn down. Mm. And so uh, then he... Like tracks the blood splatters to an, a, a, a conveniently placed na- manhole cover nearby. That's and almost like, like the cops wouldn't be able to do. Wouldn't right. be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. Just follow footprints. Hey, look, bloody yeah. footprints and handprints that go all the way over here. Well, Batman and Gordon are the first responders. Right. So Batman finds the uh, the manhole. He opens it up. He goes down. He's like, okay, they got they got too far. I'll have to investigate this further later. Okay. Like like they're not right here. And, oh, they're, and, and the, the sewer has, sewers. Right, and the sewers washed away any trace of them. Right. So I'll have to investigate that later. So uh, Batman's flashback is interrupted by feeding time, where uh, they're giving him this like weird stew. Mm. And he says, they're giving me the bare minimum to keep me alive. Mm-hmm. And it tastes rancid, and I don't want to eat it, but I also know I need to in yeah, order to survive. I don't die. And I feel like they might be putting something into it right but who cares <laughs> but i'm batman and you're like no it's not that it's it's more that batman is starting to lose it because yeah. he doesn't he's like i i there's a part of him that's like this is wrong and there's something wrong with it but there's the other part of him that's like so hungry that it doesn't matter yeah so basically the idea is that there's these underdwellers who are killing criminals throughout gotham and the underdwellers are the homeless people the homeless population is basically taken to going into the sewers and they're being indoctrinated by Deacon Blackfire to slaughter the criminal element of Gotham. This is perfect. They're slaughtering the criminals, and then they're taking the criminals home so that they're not homeless anymore. Exactly. Well, they're, it's they're, a not, taking the, they're not taking the criminals home. The homeless go home oh. in the sewers. The yeah. criminals don't go anywhere. They're going they're to the killed. sewers at night. That's why they're not asleep on the streets. Yes. Damn it. Sorry. I mean, you were very close. Well, I was hoping that was the case because then they wouldn't have to be homeless. Anymore. Well, you technically... say they took the criminals' homes. Yeah. That... Oh, oh they they're homes. Into their homes. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, they don't move into their homes. They don't even know where they live. I mean, I guess they could take their wallets, but they don't. Anyway. So they're like, uh, they're like the dark, like flip side to Batman. Yeah, like, kind of. Like we're like you, except like we actually get results. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, Deacon makes that point later. Yeah. Uh, but. And he's trying to get Batman, I guess, like, on his side. Like, you see, like, you're trying to... Yeah, you're doing what we do, but but just you're not going far enough. You're just not as effective. Absolutely. So, uh, Batman happens upon a street vendor who is being shaken down. And uh, Batman swoops in, kicks the crap out of these guys. uh, And then Then one of them... Yeah, one of them shoots him. (laughs) Oh. Uh, They shoot him in the side, and he completely goes down. And the vendor who he saved just bails... (laughs) How does Batman just get shot by a random? Well, because that's guy. that's Batman. How often does Batman get shot? He probably gets shot a lot, but he also says in his narrative that he got careless. Yeah, okay. but I mean, the fact is, Batman is always mused about the fact that like someday I'm gonna get sloppy or old yeah. or careless. I throw myself in danger 
both big and small every single day. And like, you know, I could be saving a jaywalker get hit by a bus. Like, yeah. that's the folly of being a man and not a Superman. It's just, mm-hmm. he could be struck by a random bullet. And we see Batman like brought down low as a result. Uh, so Batman's winged and then the vendor runs away. The dude who's going to kill Batman is about to take the killing <clears throat> shot. And then he is just stabbed through the back behind mm. but then this homeless guy grabs batman as he's falling into a consciousness and then pulls him into the sewer ah, so they they don't put him into his predicament they just take advantage of it exactly uh, okay so they were looking like, don't really help him and <laughs> strike him up yeah well blackfire's like get batman and bring him down here and it's kind of unclear as to whether the whole thing was orchestrated uh, or whether it was just a crime of opportunity. Yeah, because, like, how could they have just grabbed Batman if he hadn't previously been shot? Like, did right. they just get lucky that that guy shot him? I think him? they just got lucky, and okay. Blackfire's like, sweet! Now it's time to hatch my crazy scheme about using Batman. Okay. Um, so Batman's been gone for a week, and then we cut to uh, Gordon's office, which is beautifully lit. That's awesome. Uh, it's just gorgeous. But you see Robin's there, and it's Jason Todd Robin. And I love Jason Todd Robin in the story because he takes no shit, and he's really dutiful. Okay. okay. He is exactly the Robin that Batman needs in this story. Mm. He's not as proactive because he's not looking for Batman, <laughs> but he's also like, Batman will leave for weeks at a time. Right. This and is I not no unusual. But things are bad in Gotham. Usually, if he leaves, he comes back to check on Gotham, or he's dealing with something for Gotham. Right. And neither of those is the case. Also, if I find him, he'll probably yell at me. <laughs> and I really don't want to deal with that. I was fine. Why were you coming after me? What are you doing here, Jason? You should be out protecting the city, not looking for me. Yeah, I mean, that's what he would say, yeah. No. Okay, but Batman, uh, you're you're chained to a pipe in a sewer. And you're bleeding. And you're, and you're be- bleeding by barely alive. alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to run with like one of us. <laughs> okay, uh, well, this sure you do, Batman. Funny. No, I do for real, though. Okay, well, I'm just going to accidentally cut some of your bindings <laughs> and then leave. I'm also going to leave this rat for you. Because <laughs> I know you love those. They're very nutritious. So Robin's telling Gordon, like, I haven't seen Batman in a week. And Gordon's like, well, it's practically an epidemic. People are disappearing all over the place here. Should probably turn the bat signal on and leave it on. Right, and then let it burn out. And then Robin can cry and beg him to turn it back on. We see this, uh, this like, uh, drug dealer in a in an alleyway. And he's, like, he's just standing there, like, waiting for somebody. Somebody walks by. He's like, yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. I got crack. I got lewds. <laughs> and the guy's like, no. And the guy's like, shithead. And then... Homeless hands just, just take him that's away. That's fucking terrifying. Look yeah. at that. Oh, man. Yeah. That's an awesome panel. I love it. I love the sequence. And you know, like, the like the, the red is definitely from, like, a bar. Or light. Yeah. Yep. It's strobing. Then one day, uh, in the Blackfire back uh, story, the settlement's just completely stripped of its people. Oh. And <laughs> there's just blood everywhere, and that's all. And the only clue to ever surface was like there was a trapper who saw a naked Indian walking through the forest Hmm. and he looked awesome (laughs) Uh, and then Batman's like let me guess so the Indian was you that's stupid (laughs) and then they take a hot poker and they torture Batman with it oh gross yeah and so Batman's becoming delirious Uh, more delirious yeah we meet a uh, a pimp who's waiting for one of his hookers this story is going all over the place. It is. Well, it's just kind of like filling you in. It yeah. eventually goes linear in a minute. Okay. But uh, we see this pimp and he's like, we, we're just getting a, a window into... This is still into... the first book, right? That we're yeah, in, we're still in chapter still one. Because yeah. like, you're basically getting a window into what's happening and how crime is systematically being eradicated in Gotham. Mm-hmm. Um, the the street crime, that is. Right. Like, we see Two-Face and Joker in the story, crime. but only as hallucin- hallucinations. Right. We don't see the homeless deal with the Joker. <laughs> Nor does Joker okay. go like, hey, this looks crazy. I'm going to get involved. Like, no. It's just the normals could happen anywhere. There's yeah. a need colorful characters no. other than the one native. And we, we allo- and we gave you the Joker at the top of the story. Yeah, so there, you got your book. Joker. What do you want? <laughs> so we meet this, uh, this pimp and he's waiting for his hooker to show up. And this homeless guy shows up and he's like, I have a message from Sally. And the guy's like, Sally? I don't... Oh, yeah, Sally. And then he is just disemboweled by homeless people. Oh. And uh, later we'll meet Sally. Um, and Sally is a hooker of his that had been uh, abused by this guy. Uh. So we see a lot of, like, eye-on-the-street reportering going on, where, like, okay. reporters are interviewing Gothamites to ask them about their opinions about, like, the homeless problem. And, like, half of them are like, it's really weird. And the other half are like, I don't care as long as it's getting results. Yeah. I'm happy with this. Right. I can walk around now. This is great. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So then we meet uh, Sally. She comes before Batman in this like face veil. Covering. Yeah, Ooh. this veil. And she tells Batman about how she worked for the pimp. And then one day he accused her of holding out on him. And so he went at her with a straight razor and took off like fingers and just Ooh. really messed up her face. Blackfire's then like, he won't bother anyone ever again. Mm-hmm. Because I just sent the order to have him executed. Right. And Batman's like, you're a murderer. That's that's what you did to him. You murdered him. And he's like, no, we, he was executed, which is what he should have been. Mm-hmm. By your it's people. like what the state would have done. Yes. Like and then what you haven't been doing. And what you should have been doing yeah. to make this place better. And he's and so that's when he's like, when Deacon goes before Batman, and he's like, no, see, like, what would we, what, would, what should we have done? Like, have him go to, go to jail and then get bailed out and then do mm-hmm. more of this stuff? Like, get a lawyer to defend him and make, like, a name for him? Like, no. And so as he starts, like, chipping away at Batman's resolve and ideals. He's just saying, like, it's a cesspool out there. Everything's falling apart out there. It's getting worse and worse every day. You're not making a difference. Mm. Like, your your idea was better, but yeah. you didn't go far you're enough. You're operating outside the law, but, like, you're not taking advantage of the fact that you operate outside the law exactly. to actually change the end result. Like I am. Yeah. And so yeah. as he's yelling at Batman, Batman is just becoming more and more timid and yeah. desperate. And then he just gets really close to him, and then he reveals to us that he has a little, like, syringe on a ring that he wears. And he jabs Batman with it. Um, and then he says, like... And then he kind of goes, like, ignore the thing I just jabbed you with. Uh, let's move on with the sermon that I was just giving you. <laughs> but now he's proselytizing, and now he's being a man of God? Yeah. Well, that's what Deacon Blackfire is. He is, like, a man of God. He's he He's converted all these homeless people into believing in him as kind of like a, a Christian messiah. We'll see more of that explanation in a, in, a, in a little bit. Okay. All right. But uh, so, Blackfire uh, has jabbed Batman. Batman's seeing shit, and he has his followers like drag Batman in further into the caves, and he shows him like the totem that mm. they put in front of the cave that now like they that they built Gotham City on top of. Mm. And so look, look at the look at the totem. It looks like a big dick with a face on yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't Which think I'm that's sure a coincidence. I think that's very deliberate. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a big phallic symbol with him as the head. Yeah. Uh, but Batman sees it and it's huge and imposing, and he is he is awestruck by it. And of course, the idea is, or at least the implication is that like the totem grew. Yeah, because it was ground. it was the one that you see was not that tall earlier in the flashback. Was not no. gigantic like this exactly, yeah. and that like as. Blackfire's influence and power grew so too did the totem. Well, like every year he like adds a little shaving to the bottom of it and just, yeah, just shimmies it up the, up the oh, ladder. It's, it's looked bigger since the last time I saw it. Yes, Ooh, yes. indeed. It's been growing. So uh, he, he says like, look into his eyes and, and tell me what you see. And then the, the head like turns and looks at Batman <laughs> and its eyes glow and Batman's like, I see it. Like, yeah, I, I see now. Like, I get it. Mm-hmm. And so Batman is converted and part and under Blackfire's wing. Interesting. Now I get the cult part. Yeah. Yeah. Like what did he stab him with? It was like Peyote It doesn't they, they on, never like, tell you quest. No. Or vision quest. <laughs> no, they don't do that. Because he gets uh, it, it turns psychedelic. It right? does, like, yeah. So it could very well be shit. but it could also be just like L S D or yeah. some other hallucinogen. Yeah. I mean you know Mr. Fox, when you're at a party and someone's passing around weapon of hallucinogen, you know, you're looking for kicks. But uh yeah, it's unclear, but like the bubbles and the psychedelic coloring yeah. suggests that it might be something from you know his own heritage, probably. But uh, yeah, or it's just you know something that they found in the. It's sword. just some messed up stuff. I yeah, mean, like Blackfire so clearly operates using deception and mind altering chemicals to get further results. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of people, all he needs is to be charismatic and effective. Sure. And that's how most of the homeless population is under his under his sway. sway. Yeah. So then we but see. But we're still homeless. No, you live here, yeah, and you, I have food that I provide for you yeah. and everything. And like, and you have a purpose. I have disgusting food. Well, that's the food that they give back. Oh, they, yeah. They eat like, kings in the sewer. I'm sure uh, they do not. <laughs> the Blackfire does. So we get another insight into another uh, of the homeless people's like solving of the crime problem, uh, where there's this kid, and he's a really good artist, and he wants to be a comic book artist one day, and he is in a really shitty situation. His mom works at a restaurant, like, working all hours of the night. It's just this, it's just this kid who lives in a crappy neighborhood who's, who's trying, trying to make, make it. Who's trying to make it. And he's also a bag runner for a couple of dope dealers. Oh. Like, he 
And he uh, just, all he does is he moves one bag to another place. Yeah. And he's like, that you know what? Like that amount of money helps me help my mom, and maybe we can leave here and I don't have to do this anymore. And then I can be a comic book artist one day. And the homeless people of uh, Blackfire come upon him and then slaughter him. Yeah. And we see like his pages stained with the blood of his of, of this poor boy and everything. So before you're like, oh, you know, they're killing like really horrible people who like. Yeah, you're like, seeing like the gray area. And now it's like, oh. Yeah. I don't know if that's cool. And that yeah. person jaywalked, murder yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, well, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So then we meet Jake, who's this shadowy dude, uh-huh. who's like Blackfire's right hand man. He's the chemical guy. He's the guy who provides the drugs that Blackfire needs to be more effective. Sure. Right. And that's not, uh, you know, CD at all. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, Jake is more pragmatic and realistic, whereas Blackfire is more like, no, oh, like, my word is spreading. Jake's mm-hmm. like, yeah, but, like, make sure we get more money so I can buy more drugs that we need to feed these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he says, like, are you sure that keeping Batman down here is a good idea? I mean, like, it's Batman. Maybe you He's should like, just fucking kill him? Because you should have seen his eyes. I showed him the totem. He completely fell for it. Yeah. And, no, he's he's totally one of us now. Like, look, look at look at what we've done. And he brings Jake up, and he's like, look at the street. Like, I, all I've ever wanted, ever since I saw this city, was to own it. And now I do. Mm. It's also amazing. Like, look at this street. It looks like it's got blood all over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like brilliant coloring. Yeah. So. That was chapter one. That was chapter one. We got four to... chapters. So Batman is in, a, in another dream and he's being attacked by Two-Face and he shoots Two-Face to death with a machine gun. Wow. And he's like, I don't know where I get the machine gun from, but I know it feels wonderful and I can't believe I never used it before. And it's so effective. And then he shoots... Two Face full of holes, and then Two Face dies, and then Two Face morphs into Jim Gordon, mm. and he's like, "Oh, I didn't mean to shoot Gordon. I didn't think I did that." And that shakes him out of his hallucination, and he is now in the midst of shooting up a mob dinner meeting. Oh. What? Batman and the converts attacked this mob place and killed everyone involved, and you can see the machine yeah. gun that Batman drops, implying that Batman definitely shot somebody to death. Yeah. But he's under the influence of Blackfire, and he's definitely going through a uh, hallucinogenic haze. So, while one can argue that Batman is now a murderer and has violated his code, mm-hmm. it's also like, it's not really his fault. Right. It was. It's being done against his will. And been, someone like, would... Control. L- l- and everyone's being shot or beaten to death with clubs, so like, yeah. that guy would have died. Yeah. <laughs> but we see Batman kind of shaken out of it a little bit as he's watching this grisly scene of violence as all these, like, mobsters are being slaughtered by his followers. And uh, he tries to stop one, like, stop a murder from happening. Yeah. Um, one of the mobsters gets it, gets the drop on a homeless convert and puts a six-shooter up against the guy's temple. And Batman, like, turns the gun away. And then another homeless person sneaks up behind that mobster and, like, stabs him to death. And the mobster, like, dies in Batman's arms. Wow. And he's covered in the mobster's blood. And then Jake's like, all right, brothers and sisters, we gotta go. Let's go. Wrap it up. Good job, Batman. Yep. Nice work. Let's go. Way to save that guy. And Batman's like, why do we take our fallen dead with us? And he's like, that's not for you to worry about, Batman. Let's just go. <laughs> uh, because they do take the dead homeless people with them. Okay. Hey, why are you asking questions? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Somebody shoot him. So as they're leaving, they see like that they caught the mobsters at dinner, and there's like all this food. Mm. And Batman's like, "Oh my god, there's food! I haven't eaten in so long. He's about <laughs> to eat something." And Jake's like, "Yo, yo, yo, no! Food will make will cloud your mind and make you weak." Oh. And so they take Batman Wait, down. Food that's not fucking laced with shit. Yes. <laughs> so they take Batman into the well, sewers. It's giant piece of turkey it's got tryptophan in it yeah you're gonna make make sleepy. Sleep. yes it'll take your edge off a single drumstick <laughs> will be the undoing of deacon black uh, that's true that's true that's a good point okay okay so they uh they go back to the sewers jake's like now sit in this corner and wait here until you are called by <laughs> okay and batman's like okay and he's like where is the deacon and he's like he's in his inner sanctum he's meditating do not dare disturb him and he's like i okay. can't stop thinking about that turkey yeah <laughs> so he's like okay so then he sits there and okay. just waits <laughs> right over here yeah and uh, we see like the the pain of his hunger is like is like tearing at him, as we see like just different interpretations of the pain that he's feeling. That's mm. crazy. He's, he's unraveling, or he's being choked to death by thorns. Yikes! Eventually, he is interrupted from his waking nightmare by Ratface, who's wearing like a like a hotel bellhop uniform. He's like, "Come on, the deacon wants you and me to go take care of something." 
And so Batman and Ratface leave, and then Jake's like, yo, where's Batman? And the homeless guy's like, oh, Ratface took me. He's like, oh, no! Hmm. Because Ratface is an opportunist. Ratface is not a convert, and he does uh... not, like, have any of the hallucinogens in him. Ratface is just like, no, I hate certain people up there, and I would like to fuck them up right. using some, like... Some of these people. Some of these people. Yeah. And Batman will make it a lot more effective. Right. So he says, like, this guy right here, he, uh, this guy loading his car who's clearly trying to leave Gotham because it's a mess right now. Right. Uh, he's a pimp. And he, and Blackfire wants him dead. And uh, so Batman's like, he doesn't look like a pimp to me. And Raffae's like, no, look again. And we see, like, these interpretations of yeah. reality versus fiction. Mm -hmm. And so Radface like, leaps up and then just stabs that man to death. So it turns out Ratface is a racist. Oh. This man is just his neighbor. Oh, shit. And he just wants an excuse to kill black people. So he's not even homeless. No. He's just wow. an asshole. And uh, so a cop happens upon this grisly murder, and he's like, you're under arrest! And he goes, no, you don't understand. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm part of this whole, like, inner circle. And uh, No, it's fine. Don't <laughs> ignore. And so yeah, Batman uh, sees Ratface go for the cop. Mm -hmm. And so he stops Ratface from killing the cop and knocks him out. And then Ratface is unconscious. And then the cop's like, Batman, we've been looking everywhere for you. Like, you gotta come with me. Like, you, you look, look like shit. You look like shit. We gotta go. And Batman's like, no, I can't go. I can't. Ah. And like, he's, he's freaking out. And then he clocks the cop and knocks him out. Oh, jeez. So he's like, oh, jeez. Oh, what'd I do? Yeah. Oh, no. So Batman is then like wandering the streets of Gotham, like in this delirium, mm -hmm. looking for food. Wow. I love this image of like early, uh, like early man taking out a saber tooth tiger, but while Batman is paralleling it, it's like breaking into a deli. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, killing a saber tooth tiger is pretty much like breaking into a deli. Like just stealing the salami and just <laughs> well, eating it. Well, it's the same thing. The saber tooth tiger could attack you, and I might cut myself on this glass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's really where it ends. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's interesting. The tusks are where these like big jagged pieces of glass are. So. Uh, Batman just wanders away from the city, and he's like, he's, he, he, he says to his own brain, like, you know, uh, the noises have quieted down, or the, the, the rumbling in my body is quieted down. <laughs> the rumbling in his tongue. Yes. But the, <laughs> but the city has, is, is too cacophonous. I have to get out of here. Um, the cops have Ratface, and they start inter er, they interrogating him. And Ratface's like, so yeah, there's this guy, his name's Deacon Blackfire, he's taking all these homeless people into the sewer, he's got a huge freaking army. Oh my god, he's genetically people. modifying people to look like rats, isn't he? Why would yeah. you say that? Oh. That hurts my feelings. Oh, no reason. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you say to look like a rat. What? No, well, What's no, your nickname just... when you're down there? <laughs> Blackfire, you know, he, he, he talks a big game about religious, you know, divine intervention and whatnot, but like... No, he just wants to control Gotham. Mm. It's, he's just like everybody else. Like, he just wants right. to run this place. It's just like every villain. Yeah. <laughs> so Batman wanders into uh, Central Park. Park. Yeah. Central Park. Okay. You mean Gotham Park or what? I might as well. He's not able to keep the food he ate down, so he like vomits. Oh. You mean because it's real food? It's been a long time. Since yeah, it's yeah. meat. Real food uh, not ready. So he just wanders into the into the woods. He winds up spooking like a couple who's gonna go for a picnic. He's like, get out of here! <laughs> And they're like, yeah! <laughs> and he's like, eggs, I should be able to keep down. So oh, he... he screams, run away at them. Yeah. And they do. <laughs> woogie, 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 woogie. <laughs> Which, of course, they do. So he eats the, he eats, the he, he eats the eggs, and he's like, okay, I'm able to keep my shit together. Yeah. And that's when he's like, his whole, <clears throat> he's like, okay, wait a minute. I'm Bruce Wayne. I own a house. My butler's Alfred. I'm Batman. <laughs> Was oh, my God. Jason looking <laughs> for him in the, uh, the coat and hat? Yes. Uh, okay. Jason decides to take matters into his own hands, so he... Puts on his like Raphael in disguise outfit, which is his Humphrey Bogart costume, and he just goes into the sewer and he's like, you know, one of the like a person who's stationed at like the at the entrance to the sewer is like, greetings, brother. He's like, uh, greetings. And just wanders in. So did he hear that the sewers is where yeah people might be? Okay. Oh yeah, Ratface is interrogation. Oh, he got it from Gordon probably. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, meanwhile. We're seeing the news reports of everything that's going on, and we're seeing that, like, you know, older people are like, this is the first time, first time feeling safe in years, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if this religious man wants to make things better for me, I say go for it. And, of course, like, some people are happy with having their own or being protected. Other people are like, yeah, they're not going far enough! Like, nuke them! Nuke these scumbags! Like, yeah! And you're like, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, that's people. Yep. And so, uh, so they know about Blackfire now. Oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. no. The Gordon issues a statement. He's like, so this is all being perpetrated by this one guy, and he is wrecking everything. And they're like, no, that one guy is fixing everything. Gordon, you're the one who's letting everything fall apart. Mm. Gotham is always bad, and the only person who's at the heart of it is you. Blackfire shows up, and suddenly I can walk around. Right. Things are better. You better not break any laws, though, while you walk around. <laughs> well, I don't hear about that, because, like, I'm a jackass. Yeah. So, uh, Batman is hiding in the park while Robin is going into the sewer looking for Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Batman finally decides, like, I want to go home, but I know that I... This is the first time I've ever been broken and defeated. Mm. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. And in order to get this back, I need to go face the Deacon now. So he exits the forest. Maybe you could go home and get, like, some sleep. No, I can't. Or a better meal. I can't. I have to go. Or, Or or like, fix that bullet wound that's still bleeding. No. So then he wanders out of the forest and becomes, like, a knight. That's cool, I guess. So Deacon's, like... Proselytizing to his people about how like we need There's to a lot home. of book left. This is not going to go well for Batman, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so Blackfire is like yelling to the uh, to his congregation about how like we gotta we gotta go, we gotta take over Gotham. Like we're, it's it's time. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. So right. To speak. So Batman sneaks into Blackfire's stronghold because everyone else is like at the meeting. He goes into Blackfire's secret room and finds that the places of is full of luxurious items. He's got lots of like oh, great food. Shit. And he's like, he's a fucking hypocrite. Yep. Of course. Well, of course he is. And he's like, man, like once I get back topside and tell the police, I can't wait to see Gordon haul his jackass away in cuffs. Mm-hmm. And then he gets blackjacked from the back of the head by a uh, by uh, another homeless person and Blackfire. Yep. You fucking idiot. Stupid dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, a little bit. Shades of Dark Knight Rises. Like, oh yeah. Oh, Dark Knight Rises, like, oh. Took... Get ready for the for, for the freaking end of Dark Knight Rises to show up thirty years before it came out. Okay. People are talking about how like no yeah it's the holy original. No one wanted to do a a story about a city under siege. So um, the mayor's telling Gordon like okay well I've got a lot of like mayoral things to take care of I gotta have like a I gotta have a meeting about like this council thing I gotta deal with like the roads and bridges mm-hmm. you're gonna deal with the deacon guy roads and bridges what are we closing them all right <laughs> <laughs> Gotham and Island we're getting there so the mayor like is just like Gordon like you really are like the worst like just get it done get fix this right and then he gets into his limo he drives away the limo explodes oh the Gordon's mayor, like done yeah. So the councilman who was in the beginning of the book was like, well, let's 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 look at the facts before we start talking about the homeless problem right. being such a problem. He is like on cloud nine because the mayor's dead. He's right. next in line. Okay. And so he's talking about all the things he's going to do as mayor. And then he is assassinated by a garbage truck. <laughs> this plows into him. Yep. And I the... thought he was in cahoots with Blackfire. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, That's me too. Crazy. But no. So uh, the news is reporting about how uh, there's... There are reports that Blackfire killed this dude, but maybe it was organized crime. Maybe it was actually mm-hmm. that criminal element that Blackfire is dealing with. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Blackfire killed him, but he's sowing the seeds of dissent throughout yeah. Gotham. I mean, it was a garbage truck. So, yeah. So, like union labor kind mm-hmm, of thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that so was definitely deliberate. Two assassinations in rapid succession. Yes. Uh, so then Batman's being led to be executed... And Batman's like, I have. They're gonna kill. The, they're gonna kill me. I have to stop them now. So he just kicks the shit out of these dudes. Nice. And, uh, uh, where's Jason? Jason is gonna catch up with him. Okay. Because uh, he's, he's he's still, looking for. He's like he's, he's still looking around. He actually found. He saw Batman get attacked, and oh. so he's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna just jump into this. I gotta wait until like my right time. Okay. So Batman jumps into the like the stream that's through the sewer to get away, and uh, he escapes. Um, but uh, he does get tagged, and blood fills up into the water. So oh. they're like, oh. We got him. He's dead. Uh huh. And then they leave, and then Robin jumps into the water and follows Batman. Where's Buddy? We don't need a Buddy. Instead of helping him, Robin just kind well, of. Well, no, because Batman swam away. So yeah. Robin's like, I gotta go find him. Wasn't help him in that fight, though. No. So Batman, or so, so I guess Robin. If he tried to help, he would have just gotten beaten to death with a crowbar before he could do anything. Well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so Robin is uh, looking for Batman in like the in the water as it's like carrying him through this like catacomb, mm-hmm. and he's screaming for Batman. He turns on his flashlight because like that's one of the first rays of light that's actually permeated this entire area is mm-hmm. Robin, which I love. That's cool. Uh, but 
He illuminates it, and then the rats all appear, and then just start going ah, forward. Because they're like, ooh, light. Yeah. yeah so horrible. Robin tries to escape. He goes down this like crazy waterfall thing, uh, which I've seen in sewers before, so it's not yeah. unrealistic. But it filters out into this total place of utter blackness. Uh-huh. It smells rancid in here. Like, I've never smelled anything like what's in Ooh. here. Oh, no. And he goes, what am I standing on? And he says, Batman, where are we? And Batman says, hell. You see, I've been bad. Welcome to hell, Robin. And then Robin turns on the flashlight, and it's just the corpses of all the homeless people. Yep. Oh. That Blackfire has either recovered or killed himself. Right. And then in the middle of these corpses are, are Batman. Yikes. This is welcome to hell. Oh, he just repeats it over and over yeah. again. Yeah. That's fucked up. This is like, wow. So, hey, Batman, we gotta get you out of here. Yeah. <laughs> So the uh, the cult guy he's been hiding the bodies here, kind of so it looks like it looks like they're more effective than they are, like because yeah. they never leave behind evidence of who it was exactly. or what's going on. So it just looks like some force of nature killed these guys. Really, it's just armies of homeless people have been like killed. In That's, this right. War. That's right. That's yeah. right. And uh, there's there's other contributing factors to the amount of bodies that are in this uh, this morgue. Okay. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. All right. uh, the deputy mayor. Gets assassinated by uh, Jesus. He gets decapitated by homeless by a homeless mob. Jeez. He 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 lost to Blackfire. Yeah. He managed to escape. He reconstitutes himself. Goes back and loses again. <laughs> yeah. So he is immediately starting to like relapse. Yeah. And Robin starts smacking him around. He's like, "You have got to get it together." Yeah. Because I am probably thirteen years old. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "Are you okay now?" And he's like, "Yeah." Like, I thank you. I'm, I'm experiencing hallucinations. I'm freaking out. It's probably the withdrawal from all the drugs that were pumped into me. Uh, and then he says, so what do we do now? And he's like, we've got to get the crap out of here. <laughs> and so he's just like, we, look, we're going to go. And so they, you know, and Robin's like, but, but we'll stop him. And Batman's like, will we? Like, I don't know. Mm. And uh, not right now. <laughs> further punctuation of like the, the people of Gotham and the citizenry being like divided evenly mm. between like pro and anti Blackfire. Mm-hmm. Um, the news lady is suggesting that the more homeless people that permeate Gotham, the more attractive this place is going to be to neighboring areas with homeless people and people mm. who are looking to establish opportunity for themselves. And indeed, that's what happens. Like more and more people start to like flood in from outside Gotham mm. and add to the Deacon's numbers. Okay. Uh, Wait, Black the Fire, homeless people? Yeah, homeless people from all over the place are starting to like join Blackfire and they're seeing like, flood. oh, homeless people love Gotham, like, and and also that's like where it's that's this where it's is at. where it's at. Yeah. Blackfire's watching it on TV in his like fancy room. He's talking to Jake. They're enjoying a port. He's like, <laughs> "How do you get signal down here?" Ah, uh, never mind that. That's, that's analog. There's a big, there's a big long cable. <laughs> but uh, they're talking about how Blackfire has managed to reach this point, and Blackfire is basically like. Blackfire echoes the evidence that Gordon gathers on Blackfire mm. because once they find out who he is, they start digging into his records yeah. and they're finding records going back to like the 20s okay. about Blackfire and how he was like a criminal and how he got arrested and how he spent like 10 years in jail and all this stuff. And Blackfire is talking to Jake about how he's like, I always wanted to own Gotham. I always wanted to run it. Mm-hmm. And I thought that like I could do it. Like when I found out that the world was inherited by these white people who were had their own set of rules, I knew I had to start playing by their rules so i started permeating like their criminal element and then i thought maybe i should be a politician because that's the way to do it Mm. but i realized that the best way to be effective in this country and in the city is through religion so i pretended to be this deacon Mm. and i used religion as my way to manipulate the minds and hearts of these people right and that was the most effective way drugs and religion was the way to you know build my power yeah and uh and Jake's like, yeah, but what's with all the blood, though? And you're like, what blood? And he goes, oh, the blood gives me time to learn all these lessons about power. Oh. And you're like, what are you talking about? So then uh, Batman and Robin are, like, crawling through the catacombs, and Batman's like, I don't know where the hell we are. Like, I was so drugged up, I don't remember. Like, some of this seems familiar, but I don't know. And then Batman and Robin discover the totem. Uh-huh. And the totem's about, like, four feet high. <laughs> And he's like, but it was at least 50 feet tall. Like, God, that's it. It must have been the drugs that made me see it like that. Yeah, okay. Deacon's a fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Damn yes. it. Does he kick down the totem? No. 
Like a tree. We do see the totem get... Yeah, <laughs> like it's training. No, we do see what happens to the totem later. Uh, so, we're seeing the deacon's word kind of permeate throughout, like, even the vestiges of government that are supposed to stop him. Mm-hmm. Like, these cops are watching the, this warehouse, and they're talking about how, you know, like, what they gotta do if they wanna get effective is we, they gotta tell the cops we could do whatever we want. Huh, we can just yeah. roll through and have impunity and just right. and just really solve these problems. Take their like, gloves off. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, but that's what they're doing. Oh, and that's exactly what they would say. Ah. Yeah. So then Gordon is holding a meeting where he's like out in public and he's saying like, I've talked to the governor, we're filling him in, we're trying to deal with this. And you see the sniper rifle pop up from the sewer and Gordon gets shot. Oh, shit. Damn. And the governor's like, I'm st- declaring a state of emergency, I'm calling in the National Guard. Like, Gotham is a state of emergency right now. Right, right. Uh, Gotham is off limits to any tourism. (laughs) Especially tourism. So, uh... Stop playing like Gotham is great and, like, vacation their commercials. Yes, pull those. So Batman and Robin are still going through the catacombs and they discover the blood chamber uh, that Deacon uh, Blackfire bathes himself in once a moon cycle. So he is some kind of supernatural... Or at least he thinks he is. Right. But he I says, mean, like, as you can see, blood is the secret to eternal life. Every uh, every moon cycle, I bathe in the blood of these people, and uh, and then and then and I can live forever. Robin, and, get me some garlic and a wooden steak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Batman turns to Robin and goes, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Robin unfortunately hits a can Oof. nearby. It, Batman and Robin are given chase by these homeless people. Robin starts throwing, like, gas grenades behind them. Mm -hmm. And Batman's like, I needed Robin to escape. I would never have made it out. I am useless. Mm. So then... uh, I can't believe I had to rely on Robin. He doesn't say that. God, I hope something really bad happens to Robin because of this. This is worse than when I was strung up with fucking bleeding and (laughs) homeless people taunting me. I had to rely on Robin. No, he's just saying, like, I'm all used up. There's nothing left. Yeah. If if this kid fails me, we both die. That's how useless I am. Yeah. So, then we see uh, the news is about to do, like, a report, and, like, this Walter Cronkite type character is like, "Uh, it's time for the news to start picking sides. Mm. Blackfire is bad. Right. Stop. Is one side. (laughs) No. 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 He's bad. He's bad. And uh, homeless people are starting to cut into, or, or, or... watching the news feed lines in the sewers and like, okay, we've got to cut this feed, run this line. Yeah. While he is live discussing the problem with Blackfire, one of Blackfire's own people, of course, has permeated every element. Yeah. So this dude comes up behind him and just shoots him through the face. Oh my God. On TV. On TV and assassinates Jesus. him. Jesus. Then Blackfire cuts into the feed and he's like, the criminal element's been brought down by me. Like, the only reason why things are bad is because I wasn't around, but now mm. I'm here and we're going to make things better. We're going to take control of Gotham. Like, uh, about uh, that reporter that just got murdered? Yeah, he <laughs> didn't, he, he didn't believe. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, but like, all he did was disagree with you. Yeah, don't do that. Oh. And they're like, fair enough. That's, well, so, <laughs> Batman and Robin finally, like, Robin runs out of gas grenades and so more homeless and more followers are converging on them. And he goes, let's party. And Batman's just like, what? <laughs> but this is a Jason Todd Robin. Yeah. Dick Grayson would have, been like, would have said something hopeful and inspiring and yeah. maybe wouldn't have worked. But Robin's like, today looks like a good day to die. Let's do this. <laughs> and Batman's like, wow. If I'm going to go down, I'll take you down with me. <laughs> and then as Robin is like, just taking out more and more guys, like even more start to swell up and take over. And so he's finally overrun and he's like, Batman, you've got to do something. Right. And then Batman just sees Red, and he takes out every single one of them. Nice. And then we see the image of the cover, which is just Batman standing over all of these people. And Robin's going, wow. (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, Batman and Robin escape. Um, The National Guard is brought in. They know that Blackfire is operating out of the sewers. They send uh, soldiers in. Those soldiers are immediately assassinated by Blackfire's people. Right. There are too many of them. They all know... Let's jump them. Yep. Yep, from the shadows and yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, so, the National Guard is taken out by Blackfire's followers. And the governor is like, okay. He goes on TV and he's like, so I talked to the president and the president doesn't <laughs> want to send in the army just yet, but we he has declared Gotham City a disaster area. Wow. Gotham City is no longer a city. <laughs> you, We are evacuating the city. Leave. And half of the inhabitants leave, 
and half of them stay behind. Interesting. God damn. And then we're getting the talking heads and they're talking to each other and they're like, well, you know, maybe the reports about Gotham being so bad are kind of unsubstantiated. Like, maybe uh, it's not nearly as bad as we think. Right. And then Batman throws a beer mug at the TV. Uh. <laughs> and Alfred shows up and picks them up. And Batman's like, did you encounter any trouble? And Alfred's like, no, I take precautions. And he has a revolver in his hand. Uh. <laughs> because Alfred shoots people, as we right. established in yeah. Batman vs. Predator. <laughs> but, uh, but Robin's like, okay, so what do you think we should do? Like, what's the next step? And Batman's like, we are getting out of here. Yeah. Gotham is dead. We're going home. And Robin's like, what? <laughs> so they go home. <laughs> And but, sir, we live in Gotham. No, we live outside Gotham in Wayne Manor. <laughs> on a hilltop. Far away from these people. A defensible hilltop. <laughs> That's right. So Batman goes to bed in his cushy Wayne estate, and he is assaulted... Sorry. That's okay. He is assaulted by the zombified corpses of his parents who break in and throw their shame at him. Like, wow. You have abandoned Gotham, mm. you, you coward. And he's like, I'm sorry, I will, I'll do it, I'll do what I dream. Like, he's Bastion. Yeah. <laughs> story. But he's like, I will, I'll go back and I'll take down Blackfire. Oh, you better, I'll yeah. your brains. So Batman, so Batman wakes up and Alfred's like, yo, you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine, but uh, if you see my parents around anywhere, tell them, uh, just tell them I'm busy. Yeah. So, so your, your parents are dead. Batman establishes that, like, my body's mended, but inside I'm all broken glass. Uh. He broke me, I'm... I, I am fallible. Every adventure Batman's been on has been successful. Mm -hmm. Except now. Right. And so I don't know if I can bounce back from this. Um, we start to see uh, reports from Gotham. And uh, there's lynchings in the streets mm -hmm. of just folk now. Yeah. Uh, basically, that now that Blackfire's followers have inherited Gotham, they're starting to pick out like, well, now I don't really like this type of people. Yeah. And now they are the problem. We've got to take out them. Mm -hmm. and well, you can't have peace, otherwise you won't have control. Yeah. Oh, I love it, because then, uh, like, they send in the military, and this, this general's like, everything that could have gone wrong did. Mm -mm. Like, as soon as our Delta Squadron touched down with a chopper, they were immediately assaulted by homeless people, and they were killed. Their bodies are strung up on the streets, along with the Christmas decorations that we had up from Gotham. Oh, my God. Uh, and... Blackfire's people are starting to take out the bridges. Yeah. Like in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, okay. Batman and Robin break out their rifles and start taking out uh, Frank darts. And Batman starts training Robin how to shoot guns. Interesting. And Robin's like, this feels really weird shooting guns. He's like, I know. But we're not, hand we're not taking a handful of criminals out. We're taking out thousands of people. Right. We are reclaiming Gotham together. Right. And then, uh, as they are, like, musing about what they're going to do, a bat flies overhead. And Robin says, look, a bat! That's got to be a good omen, right? And Batman is immediately taken back to the night his parents are murdered. Mm. And we see Bernie Wrightson's version of Frank Miller's version of the assassination <laughs> of the Waynes from Dark Knight Returns. Oh. And then Batman, like, grabs the rifles and he breaks them over his legs. I was wrong! I wish that happened. It doesn't. But we just see him going, like, I've been fooling myself all these years, Rob. Like, Jason... Like, I always told myself that, like, I became Batman to avenge the death of my parents. I did not. I did it to get over the fear I felt. Mm. So then uh, they bust out the newly revamped Batmobile, which has more than a few shades of the Batmobile from The Dark Knight Returns. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an old tree. There's an old dead tree. They're like, let's test out the weapon systems. Yeah, let's like, take out that old tree with the missile we've got. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, he's looking at, like, a periscope and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. This uh, is not a Batmobile. It's, it's a bat tank. tank. You'll see it. It's not quite a tank, either. Okay. It's more of a bat monster truck. So, then we're seeing uh, different pundits talking about, uh, about sure. what to do about Gotham. One of them's like, the president should be exploring the nuclear option. What? And the other one is like, we should be dealing with them like a, so like a sovereign nation. We should be sending in delegates to interpret and, ah, like, and, right. and negotiate. Right. <laughs> And, uh, and Alfred's like, balderdash. Turns off the TV. Um, Batman and Robin suit up. Um, and we're seeing, like, one of the homeless converts mm -hmm. who has turned, who escaped Blackfire, and was like, no. This is too extreme for me. Yeah. He jumped in the river and swam across. Anyone who dares 
to defy Blackfire or tries to like leave is assassinated by more of Blackfire's people. So mm. this dude like jumped in the river and swam across and barely managed to escape. And he goes to the police or the TV and he's like, Blackfire is a zealot. He wants to die. And Blackfire's like, of course I do. And it's interesting for me because mm. Blackfire went from being like, no, I, I manipulated criminals, politics, and now religion. He starts to drink his own Kool-Aid. He starts yeah, yeah. to believe in his own hype. Right. So he's like, yes, the only way for me to truly live forever is to die and to be a martyr. I hope Batman comes for me and kills me or, or, or whoever. Like, it doesn't matter. As long as I get a glorious death in front of the cameras, my word will live on and I will have su truly su succeeded. Because I did it. I, I accomplished everything I wanted to do. I have Gotham. It's mine. Right. So now where do I go? And Jake is it's like... It's really hard to argue with that. Yeah, and Jake's like, right on, cool. And when you're dead, I'll take Gotham. Right. And he's saying this to the other people. Yeah. Okay, so he's he's off the deep end. He went off the reservation. So <laughs> yes. Uh, but when he inevitably dies, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm don't worry, guy. I will um, make sure that you all still take your drugs. Yes. I don't right. have a death wish. I'm no, not going to leave very you behind. Yeah. No. So, uh, Batman and Robin are going to go. And Robin's like, you ready to boogie? Which I love, because Jim, mm -hmm. Jim Tarlin... Jim Starlin uses that line again in the death... Of the family story, hmm. uh, where he faces Joker, yeah, and he says, "Let's boogie." It's right before he dies, right? But uh, he says, "Are you ready to boogie?" And Batman's like, "We have one more stop to make first. And they go to the hospital where Gordon is being held, and he's be he has round the clock protection. Mm -hmm. And during the changing of the guard, Batman sneaks in, yeah. and he says, "Jim," and uh, and Gordon says, "What took you so long?" <laughs> and Batman's like, "I've been a little busy, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna take Gotham back." And he goes. You clean that bastard's clock for me, will you? And he goes, you got it, old friend. Oh. And then he goes. And then as ba and Batman leaves and the cops come back in, they go, I would swear Jim was talking to somebody. <laughs> so they go to the Lincoln Bridge. Okay. Yeah. And it has a barricade on it. Yeah. Like in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. But more like in this book. And, you know, uh, the guards who are there are, you know, taking in their report, like anything happening. And they're like, no, it would be crazy to take this place, to take on this area. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the stronghold is blown up by the Bat Monster truck, <laughs> which has these insane tires so they can roll over uh, right. all the debris and barricades. Because, and people. Because and Batman bodies. is like, I want to take out this place so the army can follow me in. Right. And this indeed they a, do. This is an obvious reference to that panel in Dark Knight Dark Returns. Returns. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, it's the Bat Tank assaulting the junkyard. Oh, this is at the point, this is like an homage at this point. Like, it's very clear, like, yeah, I'm it's doing a send up, totally a send up of Dark Knight Returns, and they're just like, "Well, because Batman was taken down by the mutant leader, he's like, I have to yeah. go back, I have yeah. to show them." Yeah. So he and with a Robin. Yeah, that's so, cool. It's like doing Dark Knight Returns, but in continuity. Yeah. Like in a way that it can be in current continuity. That's, right. That's very cool. So they just start like firing tranks into people, uh -huh. and uh, then they're like, "We Robin, leave one awake," and so they. Uh, they leave one guy, uh -huh. and he's just like, ah! And they lower the drawbridge. Batman comes out, and he's just like, don't kill me! And Batman's like, go tell Blackfire that Batman's coming for him. Wow. And Batman's suited up with a freaking assault rifle and goggles. <laughs> and the hell bats are coming with me! Yeah. <laughs> so Blackfire's like, excellent! I want Batman to come! That's great! And so they're just like, they're, they're shooting bazookas at the Batmobile. The Batmobile's like dodging bazookas and shooting tranks into people. It's... One woman sees the Batmobile and runs for it for salvation, and she is taken by homeless people and dragged into, into the alley and unceremoniously murdered. Wow. Batman's like, there's too many of them. If I leave the Batmobile, I will die. Right. I have to... I can't stop them. Right. So he lets her get murdered. Wow. He says her, her screams take what feel like years to, to, to finally stop. And you're like, yeesh. Jesus. So... Uh, Batman and Robin roll through the alley. Um, they, uh, Blackfire tells his followers to basically lead Batman to the arena that he's constructed. <laughs> uh, and so they go to it. And, uh... Oh, there's that shot of, uh, Gotham again. Yes, we have we seen saw this, before. We yeah. see this shot a couple times. We see it, like, normally, empty. Yeah. With just the homeless, and now as a, as a war zone. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. Uh, so then, uh... Batman and Robin finally get, like, besieged by homeless uh, Blackfire followers. And they're like, yeah, we know. Like, I know that this thing is going to get overrun. Right. But not before we do our escape move. So they, like, they're, they're right over where they want to be in the sewer. They go through the bottom. The, the, the followers, the army basically goes through the Batmobile, gets in there, and then 
it triggers the uh, the gas, and they're all like knocked like out. Knockout gas. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Batman and Robin go into the sewers. They just like f- opened fire on everyone who comes <laughs> at them. Um, With tranks, though. Of course. <laughs> It's, it's like, not quite the moment in Dark Knight Returns where he says rubber bullets, honest. <laughs> but uh, they're just taking everybody out. And then finally, um, Robin gets... One of them gets the drop on Robin, shoots him in the leg. And Robin's out. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm good. Like, I got my tranks. I got my bombs. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to stay here. You take out that guy. Mm-hmm. Give him hell for me. And so Batman's like, nice. okay. And he picks up a, like a, the six-shooter that shoots Robin. And he takes it with him. Mm, interesting. So he... Busts in the door of the Coliseum. And he faces against Deacon and he's like, Welcome to my martyrdom, Batman! I see you've got the gun. Yes, use it! And, uh, you know, Batman sees him as the devil. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, he, of course, throws the gun away. And he's like, no. And Blackfire's like, Damn you! You're not going to rob me of my martyrdom! And uh, so he attacks Batman with a knife. Mm-hmm. Batman gets a couple of like stabs into himself and then Ooh. knocks the knife away. And then he says, no, 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 no. You're not getting off that easy. And he breaks Blackfire apart with every way he knows how to hurt a man. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not trying to knock you out. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just trying to bring pain. Wow. Until finally he just, he just breaks Blackfire down like a high school essay. <laughs> and then says, until Blackfire begs him for mercy. And he's like, please, no more. Like, no. And he's like... That's don't it. hit me again don't hit me again and the followers are like what lame <laughs> I can't believe we were following this loser I know yeah. Jake is gonna shoot Batman Robin hits him with a trank oh, nice. and then uh, the, the followers all descend and he's like now destroy Batman and then the followers all just rip him apart oh shit and Batman says there's too many of them there's nothing we can do Oh. And I don't feel too bad about that. And maybe there are, and maybe there aren't. But Batman, let's... don't worry, I've got more tranks in my gun! <laughs> what? There's too many of them, let's go. Like, I couldn't save that woman in the street who deserved to be saved. Uh, I'm not I'm saving not even this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then uh, the army rolls in, and the dead are carried away, and the it's, it's explained by the news lady who's sort of like, things are going relatively back to normal. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of disgusting. It's like the homeless people kind of lost their... Uh, their resolve. <laughs> lost, lost their organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then Batman goes back to the stronghold in the sewers. Yeah. He finds the totem. And he pours gasoline on it and burns it down. <laughs> nice. And he says, I don't believe in any of the mumbo jumbo he was talking about. Right. I know it's just a hunk of old wood. But just in case. I'm also going to bl- wow. bathe myself in the blood pool real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Give myself a couple case. more years. Yeah. It has to be new blood. Which is the only thing, which is gross. Or, uh, screw the blood, I'll just call up Raish. <laughs> yeah, because that actually works. Yeah. yeah. That's real. <laughs> but maybe this is real too, I don't know. But Blackfire's cool. Created for this story. He never comes back until Blackest Night when he is resurrected with a Black Lantern ring. Oh, that's cool. Damn, is this story dark. Yeah. It just gets really in the grit. I love it. Yeah. It's, it is one of my favorite Batman stories. There's a couple of, like of, of issues I have with it, of course. I don't like that he lets the woman die. I, I don't really care for the fact that he's outside of the greater DC universe. There's yeah. no Superman intervention whatsoever. Right. But I do. Sense, but... but again, I, I, I will suspend my disbelief because I want this story. Yeah. I don't like the fact that he murders... Mobsters. And that's the other thing, is that he shoots that dude, and I don't care for that. I would rather it be like, I imagined I shot him, and then I didn't do it right before. Or, I didn't or anything, it. like he's beating someone, yeah. and like they're barely alive, but they're still alive, right. and he's woken out of it, he's like, oh my god, what have I done? Yeah. And then someone else kills them. Yeah, like, right? Yeah. No. He it's... shoots that dude with a machine gun. <laughs> I, I think that's good and important, because I wouldn't really believe Batman becoming like, so like, Indoctrinated and ruined. If yeah. he hadn't done that like even if he wanted to snap out of it it's like but that means i shot a guy yes and that would just break him down even further exactly so it helps me like buy that he got that low that he couldn't even fight anymore because it's like i don't even know what i am like i killed a guy right so like either like i'm one of his followers yeah or, or i'm a loser who failed I'm, yeah yeah i'm a murderer and i des- and i don't deserve to like live or i don't deserve to like be bad and be bad yeah. anymore so you could just like 
Yeah, like I kind of buy it with that. If 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 he didn't go to that extreme, yes, and that's I'd be the thing. Like, I don't really buy that Batman would get this low. No, and this book goes to extremes. Yeah. Yes, it does. And it's interesting. Bane operates in the sewers. Yep. And he gets the downtrodden and yeah. helps the people. <laughs> the people. But uh, but Blackfire is. Uh, making him Native American, uh, a little dicey. Yeah. Probably couldn't make your billion dollar movie with him. No. Uh, because it'd be a little offensive, but, uh, yeah, but making Bane ambiguously whatever. Yeah, he could be anything. Hilarious. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> ethnic in any way. He's Tom Hardy. He, he's not anything. Like, he, he's, he's like Sam Worthington. He's ostensibly British, but like, but like, he's not like any fucking British person I've, I've ever never heard. I've never heard that accent before. <laughs> no, it was no, like, it's like Sam Worthington. What is he? Yeah. Like, in, in, in Call of Duty, he's Alaskan. <laughs> Whatever that's supposed to mean. Yep. Anyway, uh, The Cult. If you've never read it, do it. It goes... It, I remember getting it through... It goes there. It goes there. I remember getting through chapter one, I'm like, that's the first part? There's three more to go! I mean, you're watching this episode, you're like, that was the first part? There's 40 more minutes to go! <laughs> but uh, yeah. check it out. It's in the description. Buy it. And uh, if you can, you know, find these. They're pretty cheap. Like, it, they're easy to find. Because mm. this has fallen off the radar. And no one in any interviews, with, when Dark Knight Rises came out, were like, this is the inspiration. Pick it up. Like, it's rare. Like, yeah. no. But these are signed. And these are cool. I'm, I'm very happy to have these. Uh, but anyway, we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. Thank you.